what's good y'all your boy ross back at it again with another video and we gotta talk about this smackdown go home show for backlash uh this episode of smackdown took place in leon i'm guessing that's how you pronounce it you gotta add a little flair to it leon uh france they're already there uh getting ready for the show tomorrow and this crowd was fantastic this crowd was the show they were electric from start to the very end every single match every single segment they were in to it this reminds me of when wwe went to uh, puerto rico for backlash last year i'm getting the same vibes that smackdown before the show was fantastic same here i think tomorrow's show is just gonna be as fantastic um because the energy they were given this crowd was amazing and i know they're gonna be giving that energy for every single match tomorrow and i can't wait this was fun this was a fun go home show it got you hyped for what we're gonna see tomorrow on backlash but we gotta talk about the most noticeable thing that is the bloodline stuff the bloodline story and what's happening so we cut to the back and paul Heyman is walking into nick Aldis office so um paul Heyman's trying to you know get an answer from nick Aldis, and basically nick Aldis was like no i'm not going to advise kevin owens and uh randy orton to pull out the match for uh, uh pull out their tag team match they have saturday against solo and tomatonga that's when paul Heyman decides to say well you know what whatever happens to them tomorrow that's on you because essentially he's saying i'm trying to do this for the benefit of smackdown as a whole and for the benefit of them but since you don't want to pull them out this match whatever happens to them it's not on me i tried it's on you whatever happens to them which i like what they're alluding here that things are about to get potentially really violent in within this match and as paul Heyman's walking off uh nick aldis is like is that did that order come from the tribal chief and that's when paul Heyman ends up slipping up and saying man i haven't talked to roman reigns since he lost uh at wrestlemania and then that's when things you know the things shift you know nick aldis is looking confused you hear the oohs and the ahs and paul Heyman he rubbing his face because he he slipped up he wasn't supposed to say he hadn't been talking to roman since and no and then that's an extra uh story element because he hasn't been talking to roman at all roman hasn't you know they haven't been communicating with each other so who's been giving out these orders as you know solo recruiting tama Tonga, like what's been going on here so now nick aldis has some question if he's not the tribal chief then who is so nick aldis is confused he's like well what's going on here you you said he withdraw he you know you had talked to him and he had withdrawn from the draft what, what's going on who's who's the real tribal chief these are questions you know the, the viewers are asking and paul decides to say well he didn't withdraw from the draft i did i withdrew roman reigns from the draft because i didn't want him involved in this bloodline stuff and what's going on and now that's when the cat comes out the bag and it's just one of those things where everyone's shocked the story they've told now so essentially paul Heyman went into business for himself paul Heyman was the one that orchestrated the whole situation with him excluding himself from the draft roman had nothing to do with this because he's concerned with what's going on with this bloodline stuff he's concerned for him so this is very interesting uh story developments they're adding right now because now from the confirmation of paul Heyman, roman reigns has nothing to do with what we're seeing on this bloodline stuff at all so this is this is very interesting and and nick Aldis was pretty much like well you know what since you're making decisions like that why don't you go out there and tell kevin owens and randy orton on their rko show that they got out there you tell them why they should 
not be in the match tomorrow. So we go to the next segment. Randy Orton, Kevin Owens is out there. Crowd going crazy for him for their entrances. Love the crowd in Lyon uh, singing Randy Orton's theme music. So cool to see. They were electric. And Paul Heyman comes out there. Paul Heyman comes out there. And he's about to get into the ring, but, you know, he decides not to because Randy Orton, he's definitely looking forward to RK and R- giving uh, Paul Heyman RKO. So he comes out there and he's basically giving them a warning. He's like, look, look, Kevin Owens, when you was fighting Roman Reigns, it was, you know, you understood the, you know, what Roman Reigns was willing to do to keep the championship. You were a tough competitor and we all know that, but. Roman Reigns has nothing to do with this. And you even got a We Want Roman chant, a loud one. And even Paul Heyman said, you know, y'all have no idea how much I want him back here too. But he he basically alluded to the fact that Roman Reigns has nothing to do with this. Solo and Tama Tonga, they're not on the same time like they used to be. They're, They're going to try to hurt them. And in them, they're, they're, there's no line they won't cross. That's the vibe he was given. And I love the fact that they're building up this match and building these guys up as savages. True savages that will do whatever it takes to destroy someone. And as they're talking about it, that's when Solo and Tamatanga attack from behind. And they start brawling in the ring. They had to get security to break them up. This was great. Fantastic. So we get to the end of the show. We got the Cody Rhodes and uh, um, AJ Styles segment. Crowd was electric during this part as well. Uh, it ends with a you know a too sweet reference or whatnot, and then it, it ends with a, of course fucking Cody getting slapped in his face and AJ Styles rolling out the ring. I wish Cody would have said fuck those invisible walls on the on the ring apron and went after. Uh, AJ stars and uh, AJ Styles and start giving him the beats, but it it looks like the show's about to end there. But then they cut to a camera angle in the back, and you see Solo, Randy, KO, and Tomatongo brawling as they're trying to get you know security and uh, uh, officials are trying to pull them apart. This was fantastic. You even see uh, Randy or pick up a chair, start cracking Solo with it. This was great it was just chaos this is what i want to see which leads me to believe that tomorrow i love me some randy orton i love me some ko but they're getting packed up tomorrow and i think they're getting packed up in a brutal way and we may see the introduction of jacob fatu i hope so because this is the best way to come to to solidify this new bloodline is dangerous. You take out the top two, some of the top two talent or the top talent in the company, KO and Randy Orton. You take them out, and I I want to see some blood. Bust them open. Have people in there. Holy shit! And like, what, what, what are we gonna do with these guys? And it would be a perfect shot to see Paul Heyman just distraught because there's nothing he can do. He can't stop them. Like, essentially, Paul Heyman is the hostage. I want that to be the story they start telling. Paul Heyman's afraid to do anything because these guys are all savages. It works for Solo. It builds up his credibility with these guys by his side, and, and it just works. So I love Kevin Owens. I love Randy Orton. Looking forward to this match. This is the match I'm looking forward to the most because I think it's just going to be straight up chaos. But at the same time, they got to get packed up. And I want to see some blood because the way they've been setting these guys up and the way is Paul Heyman knows something is 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 on the vibe of, I want you to pull these guys out the match because I know what's coming and I know what they're going to try to do. And I think they're going to try to kill these guys. You need to stop this. Oh, this is going to be good. This is going to be great. That's the match I'm looking forward to the most. Overall, the show was fantastic. Every single match. The matches were pretty good, but it's the crowd atmosphere that made them that much better. Leon, France, you guys, you killed it. And I think tomorrow, y'all going to knock it out the park. Comment down below. Let me know. Did you guys enjoy this episode of SmackDown? And are you guys excited for Backlash tomorrow? Because I th- this show definitely excited me. But I appreciate all love support. 
Roton 50k, and I'm still young, speedy YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.